Arcade Perfect, my arse. Right, okay guys, welcome to another Arcade Perfect, my arse. This video I'm taking a look at Cisco Heat, released by Jaleco in 1990. Um, now it did come in a stand-up cab, a sit-down cab, and there was also a two-player sit-down cab. Um, <clears throat> now this game, as you can see, is a sprite-based driving game. Never actually seen an arcade version of this. Um, I mean, <laughs> sprite-based games are actually quite, uh, quite impressive looking. You know, when you imagine that all these, all the sort of sprite, all the actual graphics you're seeing here. They're not sort of generated as such by the computer, they're all kind of hand-drawn, so, you know, it uses a similar technology to OutRun. I think this is probably a bit more advanced than OutRun. It certainly came out, was it four years, four or five years after OutRun? Um, I mean, the way they've got the sort of hills and the, the way the, the buildings, you know, expand in size is quite impressive. And the sound in this game is pretty good as well. Now it does say in this meme emulation that uh, that the sound isn't properly emulated, so I'm not quite sure what's missing. But yeah, it's it's blocky, it's right in your face, but it's it, <laughs> it actually gives you quite a good impression of uh, driving in San Francisco. If you look in the distance there, you can see Alcatraz, and there's the, the famous uh, trams. Yeah, the way the graphics can you just rear up from, you know, going down a hill is actually quite impressive. And you see the Fisherman's Wharf sign, that big crab, that is quite an iconic sign in New York. So let's, we'll uh, one more, we'll play one more level of the arcade one, I think. Union Square. Now back in 1990, I mean there weren't really any games that featured real life places in driving games. I mean we're used to stuff like Project Gotham and other racing games featuring real life sort of places, roads and that kind of stuff. But back in the 90s or the 80s, 80s, 90s, you know, that just wasn't possible. So to have a game that's based in a real kind of city is quite impressive. I'm not quite sure what this is supposed to be that enough. Lots of floral bushes and trees and whatnot. But yeah, I think the idea of the game is it's some sort of race, I think it is. In second position at the moment. Now I notice when you get to a certain right hand turning, you always seem to crash. I don't know, but was there some special way you had to go around the corner? I'm really not too sure. But as you can see, this game is very much, it relies on the visuals. I mean, it's not a game that you really hear people talking about as being a classic racing game, you know, in the same vein as, like, OutRun, whatever. People never really talk about Cisco Heat, but, you know, when you see it here, it's, it's, it's a product of its time, and I think it's quite impressive. And I'm only playing this in game, so I'm imagining the, the full arcade one would have looked even better on the big, big screen, especially with the, what I'm guessing was a hydraulic cab type thing. So that is an arcade one. Let's take a look at some home versions. Right, first up is the Commodore 64. Never played any home version of this. <laughs> oh dear me. Is this for real? Seriously? Now, yeah, the graphics are colourful enough. Plenty of colour going on there. I mean, Seriously, look at the frames per second. The sense of movement is virtually nil. <laughs> I mean, it's just... The, 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 you know, the, the traffic is just rearing out of nowhere. The, I mean, the animation, the update of the sprites is absolutely woeful. Now I understand this game is very, it's a very, very graphical game with lots of traffic. But this is horrendous. You would have thought that when they were programming this, the guys who were tasked with programming would have said, wait a minute guys, there is no way we can possibly put a game like this on a Commodore 64. 
uh, I mean, you know, Outrun is absolutely panned as having woeful conversions, but compared to this, Outrun is a wonderful game. Is there any saving grace in this game? Pff, can't even see the music's that good. I mean, it's just, it's just all over the place. Look at it. I mean, there's cars jumping from nowhere and they're suddenly right up on you. Absolute travesty of a, a game, it really is. <laughs> Can you imagine how gutted you would have been if you'd bought this now? This is probably quite a late on game, so I'm guessing this was probably 9.99 at least. You know, I think I would have been going back and asking for my money again. That is horrendous, it really is. Surely the other 8-bit ones can't be as bad. But you know, when you see what what you know the cap the sort of the capabilities of the C sixty four is. Take Power Drift for example. Power Drift was an excellent game, but that is shocking. That is the C sixty four one. Right, next up is the Atari ST one. It surely can't be as bad as that. Certainly graphically it looks lovely, the sprites at least. Okay, well it's off to a good start. I mean the graphics are pretty good, um, the updating is not the best but at least you've got some sort of sense in um, movement unlike the C64 one which was just, well, let's move on from that one, at least said about that one the better. It's got some decent sound, the actual graphics themselves are excellent. It's going to be tune playing as in the background as well. Again, you're never going to capture the, the graphical finesse of a, you know, a big massive arcade game on a humble uh, com home computer. It's, you know, even this version is not a game I would particularly choose to play. <laughs> There are far, far better driving games out there. Yeah, you've got to wonder what was going through some of the guys. The guys that actually decide what games are going to license. You would think they would have looked at the arcade game and thought there is no cat's hell and chance that we could get this game running on 8-bit machines. Never mind, or you know, 16-bit machines, never mind 8-bits. So yeah, you've just got to feel sorry for the, the poor programmers who are basically on a hidden to nothing. <laughs> interested to know who actually programmed the C64. I don't even know how this game rated. Been interesting to see just how it actually rated in the magazines. So well, compared to C64, when that one is infinitely better. It's not perfect, it's got nice graphics, updates, isn't the best, but you get a rough idea of the, the game. So that was Atari ST. Right, next one is the Spectrum now. The Spectrum gave us a fantastic Chase HQ. Albeit there weren't as many moving vehicles in that, so let's see if this one can give us a, a better experience than the C64 one. Right, how do we actually start the game? Come on. Right, okay, proceed to Fisherman's Wharf. Now, the 8-bit games were all uh, individual, each level was loaded individually. I know you'd find that hard to believe when you actually look at the, the graphics. This one, boo! It looks like you're, uh, I mean, there's complete lack, well, almost a complete, oh, I was going to say there's a complete lack of any background graphics, but there we go, we've just got San Francisco appearing in the, the foreground, or the background I should say. <laughs> Not the best, um, but again, compared to the, the C64 one, at least the sprites look nice, and there's a, mm, a rough idea of speed. I mean the Commodore 64 one, it uses that horrible stripey road technique to try and give an impression of speed. I 
I mean, this one lacks colour. I mean, you can see there, apart from the car being red, every other graphic is just black and white or black and green, really. I don't want to be too critical because, you know, I think trying to convert a, a game like Cisco Heat onto a home computer was, you know, hiding to nothing, basically. <laughs> And you can see there what they've done is they've made the screen quite small as well. The actual play area is pretty narrow. I'm assuming that's to try and keep up speed or something, is it? Possibly, but... But again, like I was saying about the Commodore 64 power drift, I mean, you know, if the games are put in the right hands, there are some programmers who are capable of arcing out more power from a machine or pre using a, a particular sort of programming technique to get a game running. But, you know, this game is always going to be difficult. It's not even, I don't think it's even a particularly good game <laughs> to begin with. So, why they chose this is beyond me. There's Alcatraz again in the background. Oh, mind the bus. <laughs> anyway, that is a Spectrum one. It's not great. Damn sight better than the C64 one. Right, can this one save the day? This is the Amstrad one. Looks nice so far, but we've not seen the game moving yet. Programmed, I don't say, by the, the same guy as the Spectrum one. Was it Alan Greer, I think it was? Oh goodness me, look at the tiny, tiny little screen. <laughs> ah, dearie me. Well, I'll say one thing for it, it's certainly the most graphically nice, graphically pleasing 8-bit uh, version that I've seen. Ooh. I'm assuming that's me going up a hill there. Again, the, the update is isn't great. Stuff kind of just appears from nowhere. Okay, not as bad as the C sixty four one, but uh, still not uh, what I would really deem acceptable. I still think you would be pretty disappointed with this game. But one thing I do like about this one is the graphics. A lot of nice kind of shading going on there with the cars and even the even the uh, you know the, your opponents. Quite sure of music right enough. Was that in the arcade one? I can't even say if I, I recall there being any music in it. Well, there was music, but I don't recall it being being like that. Well, I've got some change in the music. <laughs> now there's two gears. There's high and a low. You see there, the Amstrad uses the same uh, technique that the C64 one uses the little stripes in the road, which is a really common method to try and uh, give an impression of speed. Fourth position. <clears throat> so I'm assuming it's a yeah, it's a checkpoint type game. I think it is. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, I think that's enough for the Amstrad one. Um, it's certainly, certainly not as bad as the C64 one. So let's move on. Right, last stop. We have got Commodore Amiga. Surely it's going to give us a decent version. It's got to be the least worst, I would imagine. Hopefully.
I was going to say the cars look identical, but there are slight differences. I don't know what the difference is. And we're off. I bet once I can figure out how to actually get the controls going. Right, um, I'm trying to, uh, I mean it's, I'm trying to actually see how this is comparing against Atari ST one. Is it slightly less jerky? I'm not quite sure, tell you what I'm going to do, I'm going to stick the Atari ST one on the top corner. Right, it's hard to say. I mean, graphically, they look pretty similar. Um, you know what? If if you were to actually put, show me both these and ask me what one was what, I think I would be struggling. I think possibly this is just possibly the Amiga one is slightly quicker. I don't know. Anyway, there's not a lot to choose between them. So I think it's it's pretty safe to say, um, <laughs> by far and away, the worst version of this is the Commodore 64. It's an absolute travesty of a game, avoid at all costs. I'd really like to see how it reviewed in the magazines. It's an awful, awful, awful game, and it should never have been released. Um, <clears throat> Spectrum on ones, it tries hard, it's got certainly the best looking detailed graphics. Again, there's the kind of the backgrounds are quite sparse, there's not a lot of detail going on there. The Amstrad ones, probably the best a bad bunch of the 8 bit ones. It's not really capable of running a machine of this complex. I reckon Atari ST and Amiga are pretty much both the same, so I would go for them as my favourite versions, but not really a good version out there. So anyway guys, as usual, thank you very much for watching.